when it comes to managing a MySQL database, you've got several different tools you could use. Uh, on a lot of web servers, you'll have access to a web-based database management program called PHP MyAdmin. Uh, if you want a standalone desktop application, you could get something like MySQL Workbench. Uh, or if you just want to go straight to the source, interact directly with MySQL without a interface, you could go to the MySQL console. And that's the technique we're going to be showing in this video. In order to follow along, you are going to need a server where you're running MySQL. That could be locally on your computer or on some remote web server. I'm going to be demonstrating this on a Ubuntu-based server, which I'm currently SSH'd into. Uh, but the procedures I'm going to show are going to be the same regardless of the server type, just as long as it's running MySQL. Now to begin, we're going to connect to our MySQL server as the root user. This is like the admin user that has full privileges on our database system. The way we're going to do this is with the command MySQL. We're going to use the U flag and specify the username we want to connect as, which is root. And then I'm going to say dash P so it'll prompt me for a password. I'll enter my password and then I should be connected to the MySQL console. And you can see down here our prompt uh, looks like this. It's waiting for us to enter SQL commands. So the first command we're going to run is to actually create our database. And that command is create database. And then for this example, I'm going to create a database called foobar. I'm going to end this command with a semicolon. Uh, every statement or command that you run needs to end with a semicolon to essentially terminate that command. If you don't include that, when you hit enter, it's not actually going to run. So I'll hit enter and my database should be created. Uh, just to show that it was, we can run the SQL command show databases. And there we can see our foobar database, as well as some default uh, databases that you'll typically see on a MySQL system. Next up, we want to create a new MySQL user that we'll use to manage this database. And we want to do this because when we get our web application to connect to this database, we don't want to have to connect as the root user. Because the root user has full admin uh, privileges, uh, that can be pretty dangerous, right? If our, our web application was, say, compromised and we're connecting as that root um, database user, whoever has hacked into our site could potentially do a lot of damage to our database system. They could go about deleting databases, uh, interacting with data in ways that we don't want. Uh, so we want to create a dedicated user that's only going to have privileges for this current database. Now the command to create a new user, it's a little long, so I'm going to go back to the notes so I can copy and paste it. We're down here under the section new user. So I'm going to copy this. Go back to command line. And there's two main things that you'll want to change here. The first is the name of the user you want to create. In my case, I just called it foobar admin. Uh, and this is a pattern I typically like to follow. I take the name of the database and just add admin to it uh, just to uh, be consistent there. That way, anytime you're looking at your users or your databases, you know which ones are connected. The other thing you want to change is the password associated with this user. So go ahead and delete the a uh, template password I have here and enter something. Uh, and in this example, I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm just going to use a password, hello world. Obviously, in a real world example, you would want a more secure password than this, perhaps some combination of letters, symbols, numbers, that sort of thing. So this command is ready to go. I'll run it. And now the next thing I want to do is grant this new user that I just created privileges to work with our foobar database. Once again, I will go to the notes to copy the command for this. We're looking for this grant all privileges on the name of our database and then uh, period whatever tables we want this user to have access to. In this case, I want this user to have access to all tables within our foobar database. So I'm using this wildcard asterisk symbol. Uh, here we're specifying what user we're granting access to. So we just type in our username, which in my case was foobar admin. Now in this example, I am being liberal with the pro, uh, privileges. Basically, we'll have full read and write access uh, to this database, any of its tables, any of its data. Uh, if you want to be more restrictive uh, than this, uh, I have a guide here that talks more about MySQL privileges. Uh, to the extent that you're working with a user that doesn't necessarily need full access, you could restrict things uh, just for security purposes. But in our case, I do want to grant all privileges to just this database. So we'll copy this and bring it over. And I'm going to run it exactly as is. Of course, in your case, you would want to update the name in the database as well as the username. So at this point, we've got our database created and we've got a user uh, connected to that database. Let's play around with it a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out and reconnect as this new user. So I'll just run the command exit. 
And then I'm going to connect again to my SQL, but this time the user I'm going to specify is my foobar admin user. And I will again have it prompt me for a password. And here I'll type in the hello world password I had selected. And now that I'm connected to interact with the database, I'm going to use the command use and then the name of my database. And just to play around with this, let's just go ahead and create a table. Once again, I will go back to the notes. I've got some SQL commands here to create the table. It's just going to be a basic table. We're going to create a user's table. It's going to have two fields, uh, an ID field, that'll be our primary key, and an email field. Um, when we're done with this, I'll show you how to delete this table. This is just for practice. Our table should be created. Uh, if we want to double check it, look at the structure, we can use the describe command. So we'll say describe users. And there we can see all the details. Let's go ahead and add a couple rows into this table. So for that, we're going to run this SQL insert statement. We're going to enter two rows. Uh, row number one is going to have this email address, and row number two is going to have this other email address. And once again, just to confirm that that worked, uh, we can run another query. This time we'll say select everything from users. And we should see our two rows. So that was just a quick example of interacting with this database from the console. Typically, though, the way we interact with our databases is going to be from our actual application code. And just to briefly demonstrate that, I'll first exit out of my SQL mode. And then I'm going to move into my server's document root where my web files are. Now, of course, this is going to vary depending on the server setup that you're using. Uh, in my case, my document root is within the bare www.html directory. And within here, I have an index file. Um, which typically I would edit in a standard code editor, but just for the purposes of this quick demo, I'll just load it using the command line base text editor nano. So I'm going to edit nano index.php. Um, I am going to be demonstrating this uh, via PHP code just for a really simple example. So here's the current contents of this index file, and I'll just go ahead and delete that. And then the code we'll use here, I'll go back to the notes and grab the example I have already set up. And if you're following along with this, there are three things that you're going to want to change uh, up at the top. The first is the name of the database that you want to connect to, uh, as well as the user that you had created to connect to that database, and then the password. Uh, in my case, I can leave the first two as is, but I do want to change the password to hello world. Now, I do want to mention as we're looking at this code that this is like a really bare bones example of just how to establish a connection to a database using PHP. This is not typically how we would go about doing this in a web application because typically I'm using a framework like Laravel where a lot of these connection details are handled behind the scenes. Um, same thing with like our credentials. Oftentimes you're using like a configuration and an environment system to manage your credentials. You don't just have them in the file where you're interacting with the database. But this is all just about a very quick test to make sure that this application can connect to the database we created. So this will get the job done and we could always uh, improve upon this later. Uh, so just skimming through this code quickly before I run it, the first thing it does is it attempts to uh, connect to our database using the information that we provided. If it is successful, it'll let us know. Uh, otherwise, if it's not, if it fails and the connection throws an exception, we'll see details about that here. Uh, assuming, though, that it did connect, it gets down to this code where we run a basic query against the database just to get the users that we had added, and it prints them to the page. So I'm going to save these changes uh, in nano. That's control X to exit. And then you type Y to indicate yes, that you want to save it. And then you'll hit enter. And then I'm going to go over to my browser and refresh my index page um, on the server. And there we go, connected successfully. And you can see the details from our users table. So with everything set up and tested, uh, it's working as expected. If you wanted to clean things up and delete this example table you would go back to my SQL command line mode and run the command drop table users. Uh, and that would clear it out so you can start to think about the actual structure and tables that your application's database would need.